So, uh, hello everyone. My name is Liran Eschel. I'm founder and CEO of Citera Network. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, we are IBM Premier, Premier Partner, and we're happy to present here today. Today with me will be also Armin de Razavi from WPP, the world leading uh, media and communication company. And uh, they'll share with you some of our exper their experiences with working with Citera and IBM through their cloud transformation project. And I'm going to talk specifically about the journey we're seeing with our customers as they go through cloud transformation, more specifically how it applies to unstructured data management. If you look at uh, the space of data, it's one of the main drivers for cloud adoption. 80% of enterprise data is actually unstructured data. Files, images, um, and uh, the growth rate is exaggerating. There's actually expected to be more than 400 exabytes of data in the next, by, in three years from now. Huge, huge amounts of data. And in order to host this data, to store this data, this creates a huge need for systems, for storage systems to host the data. Traditionally, unstructured data was stored in NAS systems. Okay? This is a 30 years old technology. Started with Neta, PMC, IBM, many players in this space, of course. A NAS system is basically a RAID controller with an operating system, running a file system, folder structure permissions, exposing a SIFS and FS network sharing, file sharing protocol. But as we said, this is 30 years old technology, maybe getting into its middle age crisis, right? And now comes a new kid on the block, the teenager, and that's object. Object is a 10 years old technology. Okay, addressing the problem of unstructured data storage, but in a different way. Instead of building it from RAID system, silo system, it's created on top of a razor coding, highly distributed um, uh, storage nodes. And it's not using SIFS and FS, it's using what's called the REST or S3 protocol, which is basically like the HTTP of storage. So it passes firewalls and routers and networks more easily, but different and more basic than what you would get from the traditional file systems. So you get something which is between block and file, maybe more uh, simple in a way, but highly, highly scalable and very cost effective. And if you think about it, 10 years ago is also when cloud started, right? So I, object took, a, took along with cloud and most of the data in cloud is actually stored in object systems. So it started more with uh, systems like you know, Dropbox, Netflix, this type of application, but now it's gradually moving more and more into enterprise usage. And this graph tells a picture. If you look at the distribution of unstructured storage systems, you see that 80% goes to objects. So while everyone knows NAS, and NAS is almost like a common technology in IT, object is leading the way in terms of consumption of data. But it doesn't mean that all files, that files are dead because we still generate files. We still use files, right? So files are alive, very much alive, but they're not stored in traditional NAS systems. Files are going to what's called the new file stack. The new file stack is next generation file systems that run on top of object as the building block instead of RAID, instead of block storage, right? And they're creating a new generation of file systems. And actually that part is growing very fast together with the rise of object storage, software defined and uh, cloud agnostic. Now let's look at the, where data is actually generated, where this, this unstructured data comes from. And 80%, majority of the unstructured data is actually not generated at the data center. It's generated at what we call the edge. Where it's the edge? We are at the edge right now. Edge is where physical meets digital, where data is being generated and created. Right now we're at the edge. There is a video camera here in the back that's taking photography of this graphical image of this room and the vo my voice recorded. This generates a file generated at the edge. This file needs to move this eventually to a cloud, to a data center, where it will be edited and then maybe rebroadcast this as a web link or a video on, somewhere on the internet 
on some computers, right? So this is the challenge of connecting data that's generated here at the edge, and that can be a high-definition file, large file, and moving it, editing it, analyzing it, and publishing it in another location. Okay, so that's the definition of edge. And, and actually, edge to cloud is Gartner just coined this as one of the top five trends for this year. They call it edge to cloud, not just in the context of storage, but also very much applies to storage. And it's not just about human-generated content. It's also about machine-generated content. If you think about the Internet of Things, IoT, and connected things, all of these generate data. It could be telemetrics, could be autonomous cars, could be uh, medical scanning imaging, uh, can be uh, graphical, can be video content, right? So all of these, the, the people, the machines, and the interaction between them in different locations, could be a healthcare clinic, can be a remote office, can be a user with his mobile phone taking a photo or writing a document, all of these create bandwidth and, and network and, and the data for the edge to cloud. And what are the challenges? This is actually taken directly from the Gartner presentation, talking about the challenges of edge to cloud. Again, not just about storage, but very much also about storage. First, you have latency. By definition, edge is remote. Remote means distance. The longer the distance, speed of light is a factor, you get latency. No, until you know how to go faster than speed of light, you'll always get latency once you get away from the data center, right? Now, if you have 100 millisecond latency and a large file transfer, maybe not a big issue, right, if you don't need it right away. But if you start getting latency in, uh, in a payment system, you could start losing money. If you're doing online video gaming or VR and you have latency of even several milliseconds, you get nauseous, right? So latency, it, different applications have different sensitivity to latency, but it's a major inherent limitation. The second is bandwidth. You know, bandwidth keeps growing, but data keeps growing. We move from standard definition to high definition to 4K, and we generate more and larger and larger files, and this has an issue with bandwidth. You can always upgrade bandwidth, but that's expensive. Right? So there's always a trade-off between how much bandwidth you can afford and the, how much data you need to transmit. And the question is, can I reduce some of the data at the source? Then you have the question of autonomy. What happens if the network is down? Can I work independently in offline mode? For how long can I sustain offline mode without starting to lose money or what else? So this is, and, and the last thing is about privacy and security. If you go to a data center, you think about entering a data center. You see a camera, security camera. You see a guy in the control, right? They're controlling everything. They know everyone that comes in. There's locks and there's biometrics and everything is highly, highly secure. Now think about the person at the edge. They're sitting in maybe in a WeWork or in a small office, five people. The door is open. They go for lunch. Someone comes in. The computer is open. Here they are on the VPN. They're in the network. So, Edge is dramatically, it's almost impossible to secure the edge like you secure the, the, the data center, and security at the edge is a major, major challenge. So all these things to think about, think each of our organization, what data is generated at the edge, and how you're addressing these as you move to cloud. And that's where Citera comes in. We see ourselves as the connector, as the bridge between the edge to the cloud, okay? Creating this loophole, this... Uh, field of gravity where all these things that are connected at the edge can move to the cloud in a secure and efficient way. And our mission is to extend the enterprise file services, so the unstructured data management, if you want, to the edge without impacting security, performance, and compliance. It can be GDPR, it can be HIPAA, it can be any other type of, uh, can be a FedRAMP, it can be other type of governance. Performance, you want to be able to move to cloud without the user feeling an impact on the user experience that they had with the traditional system that maybe was sitting in the edge, but now you want to move to the cloud. And security-wise, obviously, you cannot afford to get out of your firewall, to replace your Active Directory. All these things create major security concern, and you would want to have, uh, be able to do that in a, in a consistent manner. When we talk to our customers, obviously we go through that and they all realize the pain and they say, here we have this problem, here we have this data here, we have, uh, help us solve this problem here. We, we start with mapping the use cases, the business challenges, the IT initiatives. Where is the pain? Where do they want to start with the transformation initiative? And here are several examples, okay? 
like if it's replacing a NAS system that they had, maybe a large NetApp that's overdue for maintenance, a collaboration system like SharePoint or Documentum. Maybe they have servers in the branches where they want to reduce the number of I, the, the IT footprint in the branch and, and connect things to the cloud. Maybe they want to, they're fed up with their tape systems and back, legacy backup and say, I move everything to the cloud. So cloud is self-backing and I can enjoy the resiliency of the cloud. But then, and, and they know how, where to start with cloud. You know how to go to, to IBM cloud or to Amazon or to any one of the cloud. You have the basic building blocks. Here's the compute. Here's the object. Here's the storage. But in order to address these use cases, there's a set of applications and gateways that need to come in to basically give you what you are getting from these 30 years old technologies with you know, applying them now to the cloud infrastructure. And the list of use cases actually goes on. Our idea is not to provide one use case, but to provide a platform that applies across multiple use cases. And here are some examples of problems we solve to our customers. Remote office filers uh, with a NAS interface and zero-minute DR, multi-site collaboration between location, content distribution. People are still using FTPs in the world <laughs> and to push data outside. This is not an efficient way. There are much better ways to push data to multiple locations. Tier and archiving, you're generating data at the edge. And you want to need to move it as fast as you can for cloud and in-cloud analytics. You need a system that can ingest data in an effective way and remove duplicates. Home folders, home, why do we even need the NAS for home folders? Home folders is already, everything is file sync and shared, Dropbox-like interface. You don't need a NAS for that. You need a client application that can connect to cloud and give you the modern user experience. And there's huge amounts of data just in home folders of people. Workspaces, that's the extension of home folders to shared folders and projects. VDIs, VDIs are mostly stored on SSD systems for the, for the, for the operating system. But why put the unstructured data in the SSD? SSD is the most expensive storage you can have. Unstructured data, human user files do not need to go there. You can connect them through Citera to object storage and you can save huge amounts of money and just keep the images on the SSD. So VDI file services is a great example of what you can do with that. An endpoint backup. Just think of all the ransomware that's running like crazy in the world today. With an endpoint backup solution, you can make sure that every one of your PCs, servers can immediately roll back to a version before the cyber uh, attack and the crypto attack and uh, make sure, and then you don't owe anyone uh, any money for unlocking the, the, the crypto, right? So just wealth of uh, use cases that you can solve with if you go with the right approach of how to, to, to harness the power of cloud with the tools that allow you to give you the experience and the security that you need. Let's go a bit uh, into details and then I'll hand it over to Armin uh, to present uh, the, how WPP addressed their uh, cloud transformation challenges with Citera. So think about traditional remote office. In this case, we take a remote office, which I think is quite similar to what you were doing. A remote office architecture where you have a remote site and there are some folders, shares of users, projects, and let's say an archive, a backup target, okay? Very typical. I'm sure many of you have such a deployment. And let's say this site has 100 terabytes. It can be 200, it can be 10. doesn't matter, but for the sake of discussion, okay? And in a traditional approach, what you would do is you could, would create a secondary storage system, right? Replicate that data to a second NAS sitting in the data center and have a third storage system where you back it up. It can be a data domain, TSM, whatever type of these backup systems, right? And then you would have silos for each site. You would have another copy and you end up with multiple silos, maybe not all of them 100% used. And that, uh, that's the traditional uh, NAS type architecture. Now, with edge to cloud, you start by modernizing your data center, okay? You place a geo-distributed object repository. It can be hosted like an IBM cloud, can be Azure, can be Amazon. It doesn't have to be, you know, multi-cloud is the name of the game today. It can be private. If you need data in a certain uh, resi uh, data residency control, you can build your own. Uh, it's scalable to infinity, and it's... Uh, uh, very, very uh, inexpensive compared to traditional. And the nice thing is you have one data lake, right? You have, you have one pool repository shared across all use cases. So immediately by that, you save, you gain lots of efficiency, okay? So by that, you already have, and we see it time after time, customer saves 90% 
cost compared to the traditional. We go into accounts where they had, a, you know, 100 terabyte, and we go to a petabyte or two petabyte, and they tell us, look, for the same price, I can get to the petabyte scale from the 100 terabyte scale. So this is, uh, um, this is the first thing. And the second thing is, uh, you put some sort of cache. So look, we, before that we had 100 terabyte, now we reduce it to 20 terabyte. So you don't want to go to zero many times, again, depending on the type of work they do at the office. But assuming this, is, this office does some intensive work, maybe have some hundreds of users maybe, you want to keep some data locally for the experience. You can have offline availability for most critical data. You can have this zero latency experience for the users. But you don't need, don't need 100 terabyte, you can go to 20. And you get 80% storage reduction. So you save 80% here, you save 90% here. And now what you need, you need a smart caching policy, basically which files you want to pin, meaning I want these files always to stay here even if the internet is down, okay? So maybe the user, the home folders, the users of the office, not every user of the organization, just the users of this office, let's pin them. Let's make sure they're always here, even if the internet is down, okay? Then you take the project and you say, let's make it, uh, uh, what, what last, last thing, last outlook, like the, the data that people recently used, let's keep that. Most frequently used files, let's keep them there. And the rest is what's called stub. Stub is where you have a skeleton of the file system. It looks like you have the files, but only when you fetch a file, it starts downloading it, streaming, and then presents it to you from the cloud. But otherwise, it, it doesn't download it, okay? And the most recently used projects will, by nature, uh, be local as long as you have enough cash for them. And the third type is what we call archive or data ingestion. You don't need that data. The minute you put it, you want to move it to the cloud and delete it immediately. Let's say you're collecting video surveillance. You don't need it locally, you just need to push it. So the policy you would give to that is copy to the cloud and immediately delete, okay? I don't want to take anyone, any space on my cache. So you can create these policies and if you know your data, you can be smart about it or you can let the system do it. But sometimes it's helpful for you to control and to have more control over your caching policy. And basically you can reach this experience. But it doesn't end here because enterprises are not just about remote offices because they have also roaming users. All of you, you're traveling right now, you're holding your phones, right, many of you. You have data, you wanna access your data from your phone or on a plane. So you're not in the office right now and you don't wanna start going to your office through a VPN and starting accessing the data through the cache. Doesn't make sense. Makes perfect sense when you're in the office, but doesn't make sense when you're out of the office. And the whole idea of cloud is also enabling mobility and collaboration. So. The, what you would want is that when the user is out of the office, the user can go directly to the cloud and the data is totally synchronized between the office and the cloud at all time. And we call it data roaming or full roaming. Think about it, it's like when you move from a Wi-Fi at the office, you go outside of the office, you move to the 4G, right? Same idea, you work, go to a, to a different uh, a, a network experience, in this case, direct to cloud from hybrid cloud, but you still have access to your files. When you're back at the office, you, you go back to using the, the caching device and you get the fastest speed and zero latency. So this is the concept. And if you go even beyond that, there are certain organizations that say once bandwidth is large enough, or once I centralize my application, Maybe I don't need this gateway even. Maybe I can work just direct to cloud. Maybe I don't have project, I just home, have home folders. And you know what, for home folders, I don't necessarily all the time need a caching device. Maybe my users are not uh, doing large video editing of large files like we'll hear soon in that WPP case. And in this case, after some time, you can even, in some scenarios, you can even lose the gateway and still work to the cloud from any device like you would you know, work in a cloud file system. So, and we have user customers, by the way, that are just on endpoints, customers that have gateways, and many customers that in between have some endpoints and some gateways. But that's the beauty of the technology that allows you this uh, full continuum of data access. What are we doing with IBM? So we have been working with IBM for several years now. It's a great partnership, and the value that we bring through that partnership is the choice. IBM is probably the only vendor that gives you the best solution in both public, private, hybrid, dedicated. So there, there are cloud providers that focus just on the public cloud, right? Like Amazon and others. There are others that are focusing more on the on-prem, like maybe EMC, Apache, and so on. IBM is, that has dual strategy. They both host the system as well as give you a private system. So they give you the best choice, and you can, with one vendor, you can, you know, off, you can have both of these together. 
But and Citera also gives you that. We are not locking you to a cloud provider. With Citera, you can actually have both IBM and Azure at the same time. Okay? We are hybrid multi-cloud architecture, but because IBM gives choice and we give choice, many of the customers find this very, very synergetic to their needs. And the, the, the next thing is that we can also both do both endpoint as well as gateways. There are company industries just do gateways. There are companies that just do endpoint. We do both in a consistent and secure manner. And that's a major, major differentiation of our technology. The next thing about the IBM is not just about the infrastructure. Right, we know how to ride on top of IBM infrastructure, but we can also interface with the higher level values that IBM brings in analytics and security. And you can connect to Watson, and you can connect to IBM security tools, and run in cloud analytics and security for your data. And lastly, Citera is actually sold by IBM. So there's also the question, how do I contract? How do I get support? I already have a contract with IBM. You can get Citera on the IBM contract. Right? with GTS, with IBM systems, with IBM cloud, and you don't need, you can get one-stop shop for all your needs uh, through IBM. So this just you know, tells why we're here, why the IBM uh, partnership is so important for us, and uh, how the project really wor work well together. And with that said, I want to hand it to Armin. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Okay. Thank you, guys. Um, thanks for inviting me to, to present on what experiences we have at WPP. So before we get on to actually talk about storage, I need to tell you what WPP is. It's, it's the world's largest media company. We have over 200,000 employees. We have 1,000 uh, legal entities. We have 3,000 locations. We're almost in any country you can imagine. And uh, we have different workloads. We have different uh, kinds of uh, users. We have uh, office. We have market research. We have creative people. Um, we have uh, PR, um, all kinds of different workloads and, and so on. And what I do at WPP, I am the head of architecture, governance, and platforms, which means I set uh, standards at WPP. Um, I look at the technology choices that we have. Um, and to Lauren's point, we have um, many, many technologies. We can, you can imagine, uh, because we grow through acquisition, we've got uh, NAS, we've got tape, we've got uh, cloud, we've got on-prem, we've got off-prem, you name it. So about three years ago, we went to IBM. We, we signed a contract with IBM on uh, IBM managing our uh, infrastructure. And uh, that includes uh, data centers and desktop support and maintenance and, and, uh, and so on. So that's where we're at with, with those guys. And um, the, our objectives for, for really uh, for WPP is, is about horizontality. It's, it's a word that, that Sir Martin Sorrell uh, talks about a lot. And horizontality actually means that we have all these different companies, hundreds of thousands of users, and they need to be able to work together. And they need to be able to work together in a very agile way. So one day I might be working for one client, and the next day I might be working for another client. And I should be able to do that seamlessly with the technologies that we have. Um, then we come to storage. And, and you're absolutely right, storage is a mess at WPP. We've got everything. We've got so much storage that we don't even know what it is and where it is. So we went to IBM and uh, Satira, and we said, guys, you need to look at our uh, storage and come up with, with a uh, solution for us. And, and we looked at our storage, and, and uh, this is a kind of a life cycle of storage at WPP. It's very typical of any other company, but, but this is how we, we've categorized it. So uh, on the top right-hand side, you've got my files. This is the stuff that I, I work on my laptop or on my desktop. Uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, it doesn't really need to be stored, uh, archived, or, or managed. Uh, this is uh, a scratch area, for example. Um, then we have our files. This is when, when I collaborate. And it's mostly Office files, uh, Word, Excel, a PowerPoint, where, where I'm, I'm uh, traditional kind of uh, file server storage. That's what we use it for. Then we get to client files. So we have large clients. We do a lot of uh, creative work for them. And uh, this is what we call production content, uh, studio content, uh, video encoding, and so on. It's, it's very large files, and it needs to be stored on-prem in most cases because it's too large to, to actually transport it as well. Um, and then we have application data. So we have uh, market uh, research companies and market uh, 
trading media companies that, that have uh, large applications, batch processing, and so on. So they need uh, a certain amount of storage for their applications. So then we looked at uh, the use cases for uh, storage at WPP, and, and we looked at uh, client files, and we thought that that's where we can get the best benefits out of Satira. So these are really uh, driven by client engagements. File sizes are typically very large and, and uh, sometimes uh, compressed, and they're really business critical files, because if you lose them, then you lose months of work that you've done with your clients, right? Um, so before we get on to actually implementing anything, we've got to know what our files are. So analyzing the files, making sure that, that we understand our usage patterns and so on, which we, we did. Then we, we need to remove rot, which is redundant, obsolete, trivial data. So we need to look at all the stuff that we don't use anymore that, that we should really get rid of. Then we need to archive some of those files. Anything between three and seven years uh, needs to be archived. Anything before that needs to be uh, removed. Uh, then we sit down with the Satira guys and we look at optimizing the file data and structures. You know, how do, how do we, which, which of these files should we have uh, on-prem, uh, on the edge, or which of them should we have in the cloud as, as backup archive? So that's the sort of like chronological uh, view that, that we take any time that we get the Satira guys to come in and look at our files in a certain location and, and where we put them. I'm not going to go through all this, but uh, the thing that, that stands out is really uh, where, we, where we implement into the cloud storage is for backup, recovery, caching, compression, encryption, deduplication, and provision. Really the, the, the key kind of uh, components of, of why we need uh, cloud storage. Uh, and why we need to standardize on it. So as I said earlier, we have every technology you can imagine. And uh, my, my key driver in, in implementing Satira and IBM Cloud is so that we can standardize. Through econo economies of scale, then we can reduce our costs and we can reduce our footprints. And the less we have on-prem, the more we put into the cloud, the more manageable it becomes and the less, uh, less we have to sort of like manage on-prem. Um, so how have we deployed, uh, deployed Satira? So we've categorized those uh, client files into these assets, render files, project files, and output. This is a kind of a, a creative file categorization within, within those. We have a Satira local gateway that, that manages those uh, files for us. And, and uh, um, as was pointed out, you, know, you, know, you pin the storage that you want on-prem. And most of the time, most users will say, I want everything on-prem. But you know, we have to go through that process and make sure that, that they absolutely uh, keep what they need. Uh, and then uh, it's backed up into multiple tenants in, into the Satira portal. And we have re regional uh, portals. So we have one for EMEA, North America, and so on. Uh, and then that's backed up into the IBM cloud uh, object storage. Um, so, so that if somebody is roaming or if we've got somebody in a remote uh, region who needs access to those files, they can just plug in and, and, and get access. It's not as efficient and performant as if you had it on-prem, but this is the world we live in. If somebody in Buenos Aires needs access files from, from London, then that's, that's the, the cheapest, best performant way to do it. So we've had a lot of success. We've, we've deployed uh, Satira in multiple locations, and there are um, users who are using it uh, quite successfully. And we're very happy with the product, and, and we're expanding, as, as you know, we've been talking about how, how much we're expanding by. Um, somebody yesterday asked me, so what's, what's your vision for storage at WPP? Uh, it's, it's an interesting question. It's, it's a difficult one, and I think Ginny this morning was talking about uh, storage and how it's, it's expanding and exploding, and, and we're getting to a point where we don't know what, where our data is and we don't know what our data is. Using Satira and, and cloud storage, it allows us to have a certain level of control over that uh, um, storage, those files. And, and then we can analyze those files, we can see what the usage patterns are, uh, and then hopefully optimize them in the future. But without them being somewhere where we can, we can touch them and feel them, th uh, then, then it's very hard to actually do that. That's, that's my presentation. <laughs>